rebound falls right into her hands for a nice layup. And the Retrievers have doubled up the red flag to the turnover. Good pressure at midcourt by Lewis creates that turnover for UMBC. The defensive pressure from UMBC has been outstanding here in this second quarter. We saw as soon as the quarter started, two possessions to start the quarter, two turnovers. Here's the last UMBC bucket. Three, no good. Tipped rebound right into Sanchez's hands. It's just, you know, it's great a hustle play underneath, keeping the ball alive, and get the bucket. The Trevers have doubled up the red flash. As we play here in the second quarter. Bounce pass kicked away by Boyd. It'll stay with the Retrievers, and the clock will set to 20. Palacio yet to score in the second quarter. Well, she didn't play about the first five minutes. Got a good rest on the bench. The Retrievers actually extended the lead without her. Sanchez down the lane. Playoff is good. Sanchez, on the other hand, has got the hot hand now. And the UMBC Retrievers are passing the hot potato. I've got the hot hand. No, you've got the hot hand. Well, Sanchez has nine for UMBC. Good feed far side by Gibson. Shot won't go. Another good rebound by Blount inside. Retrievers look to run again. Well, for Palacio. Retrievers just absolutely dominating all aspects of this game right now in the second quarter. This has to be the best overall performance of a half here for the Retrievers here this year. Walker for three. Yes! A uh, two-pointer on the line, but Tate Walker knocks down the long jumper. Another one. Great shot from Walker there. She might have had a three if she didn't hesitate for a second. But nonetheless, it would be the Retrievers on the board again. It's all UMBC. Retrievers by 20. The illegal screen on Gibson. The offensive foul turnover goes back to the Retrievers. I'm not sure, Paul, when the last time the Flash had a shot opportunity was, to be completely honest. Uh, UMBC defense holding St. Francis to just five second quarter points. The Freebirds have been in rhythm offensively. Well, down the lane, kicks it back out, Lewis. Sanchez on the far side, dumped down for Walker. Back out, Sanchez for three, yes! How about the ball movement for UMBC on offense? And it's perfect. You have, uh, sorry, St. Francis back down inside the paint, limiting the offensive game, and another turnover as well as that ball goes out of bounds. So, take a look at this offensive set. It's a nice job from Walker to find the open player. And that's the second time in that possession they went down low there. Walker got the ball inside, drew Sanchez's girl and then dished right back out to Sanchez, who had no one within five feet of her. Palacio now, around the Walker screen. Little 18-footer, yes. She's feeling it. I think they're all feeling it right now, to be honest. They cannot miss a shot right now, and I know I just jinxed them. 41-16. Uh, Retrievers with the best half they've played all year. Wild shot, no good by Boyd. Sanchez up ahead, layup is good. Sanchez, 14 points. And a majority coming in this second quarter. What a quarter for the Retrievers. The first half of the season, let alone the best quarter of all season, and another turnover. Artero shuffled her pivot foot there. There's a wild shot by Boyd, and then again, the Retrievers in transition. And it's been Sanchez, the main culprit in transition all night. Getting it done with the assists and finishing now. Riley Donahue checks in for UMBC 510 senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Mariama Turkstra also into the game for UMBC. Three, no good off the front of the rim. Donahue with strong rebound. Knocked away and out of bounds off of Carruthers. So it'll be UMBC basketball. And Donahue going to work right away. She started from that opposite corner, saw the shot go up, and she crashed as hard as she could there. Got a hand on it, but not enough to take it away. But let it... at the end of the day, it's still a UMBC inbound. Rossio around the Walker screen. From 18, that's off the front of the rim, though. Rebound by Boyd inside. Last 
shot for St. Francis here in the second quarter. They lose the handle though. It's a steal for you, NBC. Up ahead, Donahue, one on one, tries to feed back, and it goes off of St. Francis. It'll be retriever ball with nine left in here in the half. Yeah, and Pelosi are not just feeling it on the offensive end, but the defensive end now as well. Getting a hand in there, pulling that ball away, saying, give me that. The retrievers go on fast break, and they get the inbounds now. Turkstra, Donahue, launches from three. That's off the backboard, no good. Three seconds, two seconds. Carruthers launches for three. That's no good. And it's all UMBC here in half number one. Yeah. UMBC just absolutely exploding there for that second half. I'm not even sure what the run is for that the end of that second quarter. But St. Francis hasn't scored in, I'd say, at least four minutes. Yeah, Retrievers, let's we'll see if UMBC can close it out here in the second half. They'll start with the basketball. There's Palacio between the circles. Irideer, good to see her back in the game. Sanchez, 12 to shoot. Irideer, high post. Kicks it far side, Blount with seven. Blount, good cross court pass. Palacio for three, that's too long. Battle for the loose ball is picked up by the Retriever. Some things have not changed that we've seen here so far. Coming into the second half, the Retriever is so composed and still going to work inside. Palacio with eight to shoot. Air to air from 17, yes! And a great second chance bucket there from the Retrievers. It didn't come right away, but again, just the composure we've been talking about. Enough composure to get the rebound after it got knocked away, reset the offense, and find the hands of ear there at the elbow. Well, a second bucket of the game. There's Gibson on the far side. Ward. Down the lane, shot up and good. So a nice take by Destiny Ward. Great, great bucket there by Destiny Ward. Going to work inside in a fast.